Here's a simple example. As I mentioned, not too long ago, the cult of the goddess Isis, which originated in ancient Egypt, used to be very popular among different Eastern and Western folk. By the way, one just needs to turn one's attention to the art of ancient Egypt, to those of its patterns which have been preserved to this day in buildings, paintings of ancient temples, and sculptural images. And one can see the same symbols of passing down the basis of spiritual knowledge as everywhere around the world. The working Alatra sign, a lotus, a circle, a cube, a rhombus, a pyramid, a cross, a square, and symbolic images of the four essences. So the cult of the goddess Isis lasted more than one millennium, including the Roman Empire era. And where is the real reason for such popularity hidden? In active signs, the Elatra sign, which was spread in those times through the cult of goddess Isis, just like it is being spread today through the cult of God's mother. Primordial knowledge has long been lost for the most part, but symbols and signs have remained. Anastasia Yes, Isis as the Great Mother was often depicted precisely with the Elatra sign on her head, as we have said, in the form of a cup-shaped crescent with horns pointing upwards, above which a circle is located like a protruding side of a pearl. Rigdon This symbol indicates that this power belongs to the one who created everything in the universe. I have already said that a long time ago, people denoted the concept of the One Supreme, the One Eternal, with the sound Ra. This is where later, with the emergence of priesthood, a god named Ra appeared, who, according to legends, emerged from the lotus flower that had risen from the world's ocean. The great goddess, who was called by different epithets, which were later transformed into names, initially acted as the conductive power of Ra, the One Eternal. At various times, besides Isis, the bearers of such a sign in ancient Egypt were goddess Hathor, a daughter of the sun Ra, her name means the home of heaven, and goddess Lusaset, her name means the creating hand of God, the greatest among those who emanate. It was considered, for example, that if a person tastes goddess Hathor's spiritual gifts, then this will give him more spiritual powers, and she will help him cross over from the earthly world to the other spiritual world. This is why the following epithets were bestowed upon her. The Great Mother, Goddess of Love, Spiritual Joy, the One Shining in the Rays of Ra, the Great Woman, the Creator of All Living Things. Among additional associative designations that symbolized her were sycamore as the tree of life, as well as symbols of eternal life, the colors of green and blue, which as legends had it, were commanded by her. The latter is connected to the coded knowledge about the wave nature of a human and the moment of spiritual transformation. Anastasia Yes, the same colors are present, as already mentioned, in the designation of the divine characters, who for different peoples embody the cosmic order, the waters of life, fertility, the mother progenitress, and the creating divine power of the feminine principle. In the Christian religion, these colors are inherent to the Mother of God. The rhombus of Our Lady of the Burning Bush, Neopalimaya Kupina, for example, which has the image of the Virgin Mary, is also denoted by green or blue, navy blue color. This indicates that one and the same basic knowledge was passed down from generation to generation, from nation to nation. Incidentally, there is this ancient word glavka, which the ancient Greeks had borrowed in their time for their mythology from the peoples who once lived on what today are Slavic territories to denote the creating power of the divine principle connected with water, which also commanded green and blue colors. Rigdon I will say even more, 
In order to explain to people the knowledge of the invisible world, one had to refer to associations and images that could be understood by residents of the three-dimensional world. In the ancient times, the Great Mother, Goddess, as the creating power of the spiritual nature of a human being, whose reflection eventually became, for instance, that same Isis, who was represented as a woman, was initially depicted in a certain pose reminiscent of a sacred cube, when a person is sitting and hugging their knees. From above, the cube was crowned with a head indicating its top, and the elytra sign was placed on the head or on one of the facets of the cube itself. The essence is simple. This is a symbolic depiction of the path of spiritual liberation of the personality when it merges with the soul, regardless of the body in which the person is located, for example, his gender, race, and so on. This is how the foremother was originally depicted in ancient times, sitting in cubical position. Moreover, she was placed on a square, flat base. The cube meant the spiritual world, which a person can reach with help of the divine power of the feminine principle, a lot, and qualitatively change his nature, becoming a different being, a spiritual one. It also meant the six dimensions in which the human structure was located. The flat square stone is the earthly material world and also four corners as an indication of the four main human essences. Later, when people started imitating this, priests began to reproduce, immortalize for the sake of earthly glory, their faces in the form of cubic sculptures. Later, when in that same ancient Egypt, gods began to be portrayed in the form of personalized sculptures, then in order to reflect their divine essence, the god's figure was placed on a cube. And if it was necessary to indicate a connection between earthly and heavenly, divine, then it was put on a cube, which was placed on a flat square. If the figure was placed simply on a flat square, That meant only the earthly aspect of existence. Such initial cubical statues, as well as their variations of the rhombic types, in their time were quite widespread canonical sculptural images not only in ancient Egypt, but also in other parts of the world. Anastasia Indeed, I have often encountered similar figurines of deities sitting in a cubic position among the archaeological finds discovered in different parts of the world. The figurines found in the Paleolithic layers, the so-called Great Mother, also sit in the same way, with legs tucked under and arms on the knees. Similar figurines were discovered among the finds belonging to the Harappan civilization. And what about the cubic figurines of ancient Indian and Chinese gods? not to mention multiple artifacts of the Aztec, Olmec, and Maya in Mesoamerica. On territories where the Slavic people lived, figurines of the great foremother of the period of Trapelian civilization were found, where on her bosom there is a rhombus with a diagonal cross inside and with points centers, and another version of her portrayal has specific symbols of a truncated pyramid or two intertwined serpents, which taking into consideration, for example, ancient Indian knowledge about the power of the Kundalini serpent, symbolize the creating power of a human spiritual revival. Rigdon By the way, two snakes curled up into a bowl for the ancients were one of the original symbols of death and resurrection of nature, its renewal. Snakes For instance, grass snakes go below ground in the autumn and curl up into a large ball in earth burrows, falling into hibernation, then wake up in the spring and leave the burrows from below ground. That is why they served as an associative example for those people who wanted to understand what reincarnation, death, and resurrection of a human being are in the cycle of rebirth of his soul. Anastasia. Yes, many peoples, especially in the East, 
revered the snake as a symbol associated with fertility, the feminine principle, earth, water, and also wisdom. If one considers this knowledge in the spiritual context, then everything falls into place. Regarding the Trapillion civilization, it is interesting that, for instance, ceramic jugs with sacred symbols were mostly of the rhombic form. If one carefully examines archaeological findings, one will find that the significant symbols and signs of spiritual development were depicted on such jugs. The circle, the crescent with its horns pointing upwards, spirals, triangles, pyramids, wavy snakes, zigzag-like dividing lines, connection with water, in other words, with the other world, four-pointed crosses, the sun and the moon, four suns. Moreover, according to archaeological excavations, every house of the Trapelian civilization had a cross-shaped sacred altar in the form of the diagonal cross where the first fire for the stove was kindled. It's the same symbol of the fire of the soul and the four essences. Rigdon The rhombus form is often found in the most ancient ornaments. It was called the symbol of unity of earth and heaven and was associated with lily and lotus. Anastasia Here, even if we trace the etymology of the word rhombus, we can discover interesting facts. This word is derived from the Greek rhombos, which means a spinning top, magic wheel, tambourine. In this regard, it suffices to recall the important symbolic role the tambourine played in magical actions, for example among shamans. Moreover, usually such a tambourine was decorated with, again, those same main symbols and signs. Rigdon Absolutely. By the way, it was believed that the shaman extracts the sacred sound from it with one hand while holding in the other hand the crossbar of the tambourine, which as a rule had the form of a diagonal or equilateral cross. After all, according to the symbolism, it is the intersection of the circle and the cross that creates eight faces, the octagon. The white shamans of Siberia had a belief, sacred knowledge, that if the square, that is, the signs of the four elements, is set into motion, then they may turn into the sign of eternity, circle. And in the West, in the ancient philosophy, the Greeks called the same process quintessence, from the Latin word quinta essentia, the fifth essence the theory of the fifth element. Anastasia. That is true, and it was called the primary ether, divine, eternal, and celestial, heavenly, being in the sky. Aristotle generally defined the quintessence as the thinnest element, the basic essence, the substance of the whole superlunary world, unlike the four elements of the sublunary world which are subject to cyclicity of interconversion, emergence, and destruction. Everything is so simple. It turns out that everyone is talking about the same thing, only using different words. Rigdon. Of course, there is nothing difficult if you know. When you reach an understanding, everything becomes simple. Regarding shamans, you have noted quite rightly that in those times, this knowledge and such a form of passing it down were natural for different peoples. But even earlier, this basic knowledge was known to the majority in the human society, and people did not need additional explanations, even if they lived in different parts of the planet. So then, a statue in the form of a cube symbolized the victory of a human spiritual nature over the material one that is, of the spiritual nature over the animal nature. It also meant a spiritually mature person who is ready to perceive the divine word. The latter in those days was considered to be an inaudible sound, thanks to which God communicates with a human, and spiritual enlightenment of man in the understanding of the one. That is, gods were sometimes depicted with an open mouth, 
but more often, corresponding signs were placed on their cubic statues. And later, when hieroglyphs appeared, they began to carve out communications to the one who had an invisible nature. Anastasia, I believe that readers will be interested to learn that people back in those ancient times knew about the primordial sound. Rigdon, of course they did. After all, this is basic spiritual knowledge. What did, for example, a hieroglyph mean in ancient Egypt? It was initially considered to be a sacred sign, the divine word, the sign that indicated the sound. Moreover, hieroglyphs were written in a specific order and grouped in different square and rectangular shapes, which also had its meaning. Such writing was taught only in temple schools called Houses of Life. Let me remind you that the symbol of life, eternal life, for the ancient Egyptians was the Ankh sign, which was called the Key of Life, Key to Eternity. By the way, this peculiar cross as a symbol of immortality was associated with water, the other world. It was known not only to the ancient Egyptian civilization, but also in the Mayan civilization and ancient European peoples, for example, to the Scandinavians. It is interesting that the ancient Egyptian scribes themselves who applied sacred signs as a rule were depicted in a lotus position, sitting with crossed legs on a square flat stone. The lotus position in ancient times was also conditionally called a pyramid. The ancient Egyptians had a special attitude to sound as a sacred manifestation of the Invisible One who created everything. That is from whence they have this understanding recorded in legends that sounds awaken the universe. They awaken not only the soul, but also the most beautiful thing in it, the connection with the Invisible One. Anastasia Obviously, that is why in ancient Egypt there was a special veneration of music as of great creating power. Mentions have been preserved that in some religious ceremonies only women were trusted to fill the space with sacred sounds. For example, priestesses of goddesses Isis and Hathor, on whose heads, incidentally, there was the Elatra sign. Rigdon All this, of course, are external rituals, which, however, symbolize precisely the creating power of the divine Alat, which manifested the power of God, the primordial sound of creation, through the Alatra sign. But the most important thing in all this theatrical action of associative transfer of spiritual knowledge is the attitude of believers and the working sign which is seen by masses of people. Later, when knowledge began to be lost, initiated people started renewing it in the form that could be understood by the new generations. Then, a different image of the great mother goddess became popular, already not in the form of a cube, but in the form of a woman sitting on the face of a parallelopiped, the hexagon whose opposite facets, which symbolized six dimensions, are equal and parallel like with the cube. Moreover, the emphasis was placed on the fact that the goddess sits exactly on the top of this symbolically depicted cube by marking or highlighting with ornament one of the vertices of the cube. The feet of the goddess rested on a square flat stone. All this symbolized the connection between the earth and the sky. On the head of the Great Mother, there was always the Alatra sign which played a key role in the spiritual activation of the person looking at it. Spiritual symbols began to be placed in the hands of the Great Mother. For example, in the left hand, there was the Ankh sign, key to eternity, and in the right hand, there was the lotus flower with a long stem. Sometimes the goddess was depicted holding the symbolic left and right essences in her hands as a sign of victory over the animal nature, which was later replaced with a staff. The lotus was initially a symbol of the spiritual knowledge, spiritual practice, creating forces, perfection, and eternity in the One.
That is why it was called the sacred flower, knowledge of the radiant one, Ra. Many gods, and not only of ancient Egypt, were depicted sitting on the lotus flower. Incidentally, as I once mentioned, it is the lotus that was one of the first symbols of immortality and resurrection among different peoples in the meaning of spiritual transformation of a human. Later on, this was one way or another reflected in the religious beliefs of different cultures, for example, of ancient India, ancient Egypt, Assyria, Phoenicia, Hittites, and others. If a lotus bud was depicted, this meant potential capabilities of a person during his lifetime. And if a ripe lotus seed pod was depicted, which has the form of an inverted, truncated, cone-shaped small pyramid, this meant the result of lifetime actions of a person, a kind of fruit, a total after his death. If this stalk with the seed pod was in the hands of a deity, then this meant a fruit-bearing power of creation. Besides, the lotus was often depicted together with the Great Mother, as scientists call her, Goddess of the Moon, so later they started drawing it in the form of a bowl. So in the hands of the Virgin Mother of the ancient Egyptian culture, the lotus symbolized chastity, spiritual fertility, the virginal purity of the creating power of the feminine principle. Later, there were different interpretations of the lotus flower in the hands of the great goddess, staff, the rod of spiritual power over matter entwined by one or two serpents, a blossomed scepter, knowledge in the form of an open scroll, open book. Still later, goddess Isis began to be depicted in the following way. The palm of her right hand is pressed to the solar plexus, and with her left hand she holds the child, the son of the one, whose name is Horus, which means the one who is from the sky. Horus, as a creating god, was usually depicted with the head of a falcon. Anastasia Yes, we have already mentioned in a conversation that in the mythology of the peoples of the world, since ancient times, the bird served as an association related to spiritual concepts with a spiritual being who came from heaven, from another world, as well as with the human's front essence. For many peoples, drawing of wings as such meant the connection with other worlds, dimensions, the symbol of elevation of the soul into eternity of the spiritual world after death of the body in the material world. The image of the bird became an archetype for all winged creatures. Rigdon Absolutely. Besides, birds were also attributes of the gods who personified the struggle of the forces of light and darkness, who acted in the invisible world and induced the human choice to either side. That is why, since ancient times, the initiated divided birds symbolically. For example, falcons symbolized the forces of light, spiritual vigilance, and courage in action. Eagle symbolized the dark forces and struggle for the material power. But because of imitation and misunderstanding of the essence of these symbols, the symbolism of these birds practically merged and they were being substituted for each other in the human society. However, for an intelligent person, it is enough to look at the modern symbolism of the banners of states and international organizations. Are there many falcons to be found there? However, the number of eagles is countless. This is just another indirect confirmation, out of numerous facts, of what edge today's society stands on, who controls it, and what power is winning in this world. Anastasia The high flight of the falcon in ancient Egypt, for example, was associatively compared to the flight of the soul in heavenly realms. It was believed that Horus, as the son of Osiris and Isis, was called to the human world to unite heaven and earth and to fight the forces of darkness. The embodiment of life force and the soul, Ba, was represented in the form of a falcon with a person's head.
and some gods, on the contrary, were depicted as people with a falcon's head. Rigdon. That is right. Such gods of ancient Egypt, as for instance Ra and Mantu, were depicted in the ancient times in the form of a falcon-headed person, and on their heads there was a sign of a circle. Their symbol was a winged sun disk, circle. It was an attribute of not only the ancient Egyptian Ra, Mantu, and Horus, but later, as I have already mentioned, it was a symbol of gods of other peoples, for instance, of the supreme god of good for the ancient Persians, Ahura Mazda. So, returning to the topic of the symbolism of the Great Mother and the Cube, the name of goddess Isis, for example, when translated from the ancient Egyptian language into Greek, means a throne, a seat. The Greek word thronos, in its turn, means a seat, a raised platform. This is precisely what has been connected with ancient images of the Great Mother in the sitting position in the form of a cube. The hieroglyph related to the name of Isis was depicted in such a way as a side view of a flat square stone, a parallelopiped emphasizing the fact that the goddess sits at its very top, corner. This throne, seat, is also often placed on the head of Isis as a designation of her name, which is one of the ancient epithets of the Great Mother, connected with spiritual elevation, a symbolic holy place, the connection of heaven and earth. And that is how the symbolic cube became a throne. And now it is enough to draw an analogy of what various religions call the place of becoming closer to God, to the highest enlightenment in self-perfection, and much will become clear. Buddha, for example, was depicted on the throne that was named with the epithets Lotus and Diamond Throne. In Christianity, for example, instead of the word throne, they used the word that was similar in meaning, prestol in English transcription. The old Slavonic word prestol is derived from the word stol, slut, table, to spread. Moreover, meaning a sitting place and even a platform, connection with the Supreme. That is why there is such a saying, the throne, prestol of God, is heaven. Anastasia. The communion table, prestol, a quadrangular table with relics that is covered with a veil, is the main attribute of the Orthodox Church. It stands in the middle of the altar. Incidentally, it is interesting that many types of altar compositions represent precisely the Mother of God on a throne. Rigdon, exactly right. But it is worth noting that it is one thing to depict gods with typical symbols in order to pass down spiritual knowledge, and another are people with their insatiable thirst for material imitation and power. During the period of development of the political and priestly institution of power in human society, those in power, imitating ancient images of gods who were sitting on the throne, did not hesitate to surround their dear selves with all the symbols of God's glory, often without understanding its original essence. I will not even mention the civilizations of the East, Asia, and the West, Mesoamerica, in this regard. Their history has enough of such facts. I will simply give an example of analytic lore about the royal regalia in Rus, about the so-called throne of Monomach, which has been preserved to this day. Earlier, the Tsarist throne was called Tsar's Place. This was a symbol of supreme power. It was located not only in the prince's outer entrance hall in the palace, but also in temples. In the temple, it was, as a rule, placed on the right hand of the holy gates of the iconostasis in the form of a marquee canopy cover on four pillars, where behind a separate entrance there was a fenced-in seat. And the pillars of this pyramidal throne were the figures of four animals. And which animals at that? A fierce lion, skimant, a monster beast, uina, hyena, a vicious beast without turning neck, and two oscrogons, 
One has many knots, and the other is also full of light to the brim. Anastasia In other words, in the pillars of the Tsar's throne there were symbols of all four essences of man. The lion and the hyena are lateral essences, and the one that has many knots must definitely be the back essence. And what is the exact translation from the Old Slavonic of the last phrase? Rigdon And the second one is full of light to the edge, limit, top. Anastasia That's precisely about the front essence. That's the Old Slavonic ancient language for you. As they say, it's a shame not to know it. Rigdon Regarding the four essences, for ancient Slavs, as I have already mentioned, this was nothing new. Their ancient deities, which in the era of propagation of Christianity began to be called pagan, fully reflected all this knowledge that was formulated in understandable to people associative form. For example, let us consider the Slavic deity Strobos, Strebog, the god of the four winds. The root of his name comes from the word to build, and its main function was defined as the organizer of good. The four winds of different seasons allegorically stood for the four human essences, those invisible intelligent spaces that try to dominate in him. At that, three of them are whirling vortices, creating wail and whistle that spin in a swift dance to the sound of heavenly choirs. That is why later in the folklore, Russian incantations, people invented curses against a terrible devil, a violent whirlwind, and a flying fiery serpent. And the spring wind was associated with the front essence, with the first spring birds, messengers of good spirits, and with the singing and music of heavens. So all the tools were given so that people built good inside themselves. The rest already depended on their human choice. Anastasia Yes, it turns out that the associative concepts of ancient Slavs about the nature of the human spatial structure and his spiritual component were closer to the truth. For the wind, as an element of tangible space, comes the closest to characterizing the invisible nature of the four essences. Richten But what is even more interesting regarding the ancient Slavs, their knowledge was recorded not only in mythology, but also in architectural buildings. Long before Christianity, in Rus there existed constructions of temples that later became known as tent-shaped. The old Russian word shatur is derived from the Turkic satir, meaning a tent, canopy. By the way, the ancient Indian word shatram means a barrier, veil, and was associated with the meaning of I open and close light. Anastasia I open and close light? So in fact, in the spiritual interpretation, this is key to heaven? Rigdon Absolutely. So then, in the old Russian architecture, shatar was the name given to the finial of the centric buildings in the form of a tetrahedral or octahedral pyramid on the top of towers, temples, and even the front porch in an ordinary wooden house. This was a symbol, speaking the modern language, of an active aspiration of a human for the spiritual, heaven. In fact, this structure represented an octagon placed on quadrangle allowing to make a transition of tiers of square base of, for example, a temple to its octagonal finial, marquee, on top of which a small cupola was placed as a topper with a hemisphere. Anastasia A topper with a hemisphere? A finial on eight facets with an indication of a cupola? That's exactly the top of a cube placed on its vertex. These are true architectural symbols of pillars of light. Rigdon. By the way, the word glavka, cupola, gave origin to the old Slavonic word glava, meaning a head, as the beginning of everything, the basis, the supreme, head honcho, head of the house, a chapter, 
head of birch bark manuscripts and later books and so on, but in the human himself, Glavka was the crown of his head, the top of a human. Anastasia Well, the crown of the head has always been marked as a thousand-petaled lotus chakran, or as it is called in India, the Sahasra Ra chakran, which when translated from Sanskrit, means a thousand petals of a lotus. This is the human's seventh chakran. Interestingly, the Hindus believe that it is here that the spiritual consciousness blocks the lower human essences which bind to earthly attachments and desires the soul that seeks eternity. It is with the help of this chakran that the unification with the Supreme as the final stage of the spiritual growth of the soul in the body shell takes place. It is here, according to the views of religious ascetics of India, that the awakening creating power of Kundalini, the Kundalini serpent, rising through the six chakrans, ends its path, and super-enlightenment takes place, unification with super-consciousness, the soul with God, the Supreme One. Rigdon. It is also worthwhile paying attention to the symbol with which they mark this chakram as a transparent diamond, from which subsequently the names, the lotus, and the diamond throne of Buddha came from. Anastasia. Each time I come across the ancient knowledge of Indo-European peoples, their wisdom and the depth of cognition of the spiritual essence never cease to amaze me. Richten. Various peoples, including the ones living on the present Slavic territories, have had this knowledge since ancient times. Moreover, what else was typical for the ancient Russian temples with such construction? They made quite a strong impression with their external symbols and scale of construction. But the inner space of these ancient temples was extremely small and not intended for populous worship. The incredible height over the crossing was emphasized in this inner narrow space of the temple. Often, it is to the foremother of this or that people that such temples were dedicated as to the creating power of the divine feminine principle, so their internal space also symbolized path of spiritual perfection in a human being himself. <laughs>